Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, find common characters. We're given a string or basically a list of words. And so the way this is worded is honestly kind of confusing to me, but let's break it down. We're going to return an array of all characters that show up in all strings within this list. I feel like they probably could have used the word every, but you know, that's just me. So what does that mean? And what does it mean when they say include duplicates? Well, the idea is basically just look at the example. Don't even bother with the description half the time. These are the words we're given, Bella, label, and roller. Which characters are common to all three strings? It looks to me every single one of those words has an E in it and every word has an L in it. But the result is not E-L, it's E-L-L. -L. And that's because every word actually has two L's in it. This has two L's, this has two L's, and this one has two L's. So this is the result. B is not common to all three. It's common to the first two, but not this one. R is not common to all three either. A is not common to all three etc etc so that's the idea now how do we solve this problem obviously the fact that there are duplicates in here highly suggests the fact that for every given word let's at least count the occurrences of every single character so let's do bella looks like we have a single b looks like we have a single e we have two l's i'm not really sure how to make this look not like a one but um, and we have a single A. We can do that for the other two words. I'll just kind of fast forward that. So we counted the words. Now, let's just go through every single character. B, it looks like it's in these two words, but not this one. So we can't include that in the result. What about E? It does look like it's in all three strings and it has a count of one. Suppose this one for some reason had two E's in it. What would we do? Well, we'd say this one has one E, this one has one E, this one has one E, it technically has two, but we have to take the minimum, right? We have to take the intersection of these three and then minimize it. So we'd say we can only have one E. In this case though, this one already has one E anyway, so it makes our life easy. So we just put an E down here. Next we look at L, it's in all three of these. So the count of it again is two. We take the minimum and it's two in all of them, so we would take two. If suppose one of these only had one L, then we'd have to take the intersection. These have two L's, but this one only has a single one, so we'd have to put one L, but that's not the case. Each of them has two, so we can put two L's in the output last, a has a count of one in these two words, but it doesn't show up in this word. Now you might think, well, don't we also have to look at some of the other characters? Like we only looked at B, E, L, A. We did not look at R, nor did we look at O. But my claim to you is we actually don't need to look at the keys of every single word because we only care about the keys that show up in every single word anyway. So it doesn't matter whether we iterate over the keys in this word or we iterate over the keys in this one or this one. We just have to pick a single word and then check which of those keys belong to every single word. The answer will be the same. Like in this word, we see that E and L show up in the other words as well. R doesn't, O doesn't either. So now, this solution does work. This is a perfectly valid solution. Just count the occurrences for every single word, then just pick one word arbitrarily, go through the keys of it, check does the, that key exist in all the other words, and then minimize the count. This works, it's kind of complicated to code up, and also, if you think about the space complexity, every single word will, like an individual word, will only have up to 26 distinct characters, lowercase a through z, I think. But the number of hash maps we're going to create, each one of them is gonna be constant size. That's what I'm getting at with this. But the number of hash maps we're gonna to have to create is gonna be proportional to the number of words in the input. Let's say that's N. So the overall space complexity is gonna be big O of N. We can actually reduce the space complexity to one. And I'm gonna show you how that is. We're going to take, let's say, one of the words, this one, and then we're going to build a hash map with it. So this is constant space so far. Once we have that hash map, we're going to say, okay, this is the most amount of characters that could possibly be in the output. Like we can never have more than a single E in the output. 
because if this word doesn't have multiple E's, it doesn't matter how many E's the other words have because we have to minimize the count. So, okay, so this is at most the number that we could have in the result. Now we're going to count a second word. Let's pick this one just to make it more interesting. So we have these two hash maps in memory. This is still constant space. Having two hash maps that are of constant size is still constant. Now, what we're going to say is find the intersection of just these two before we were finding the intersection of all the hash maps at once. But now we're going to do it pairwise. We're just going to look at two hash maps at a time. And so I'm going to pick this one to iterate over. Let's check B. Is that common to both of them? No. So what I'm going to say is screw this. B is never going to be in the output because we found at least one word that does not have B. Okay, let's try E. Okay, it does show up in both and the count is the same. So let's keep this. What about L? Shows up in both. Count is the same. What about A? It does not show up in this one. So screw it. We only have these two left. This is the max that our result could possibly have. So we've gone through this word and we've gone through this word. Now let's look at this word. Throw it into a hash map and then start comparing. Let's check. Does E show up in both? Yep, and the counts are the same. Does L show up in both? Yep, the counts are the same. So now we've gone through every single word. This is no longer in memory. This is the result. But the only thing we have to do is take this hash map and convert it into a list of characters. I think you probably know how to do that. We're going to iterate over every single key. So we're going to have a loop for that. Let's say every single key in the hash map. And then in this loop itself, we're going to iterate for however many times, let's say I in the range of this quantity, this number. So in this case, it's one. So we're going to add a single E to the output. And then we're going to iterate two times for L and we're going to add two L's in the output. And that's the result. So space complexity, as you could tell, was constant. What about the time complexity? Well, in the worst case, we're pretty much iterating over every single word in the input. We're doing that to throw them into hash maps, and then we're potentially going through the unique keys. That's not going to be super expensive, though. This is the bottleneck. So overall, time complexity is going to be, let's say N is the number of words. Let's say M is the size of the longest word or the average length of the word. It doesn't really matter. And this is going to be the overall time complexity in that case. The beautiful thing about Python is that we can actually take a given word and get the count of every single character very easily. We can call counter, let's say on the first word. We're guaranteed that there's going to be at least one word in this list, so we don't have to worry about index out of bounds. So this will return a hash map with the count of every single word. Great. Now we want to go through the rest of the words. What I could do is say I in range from one to the length of words, but actually this solution is going to work out the exact same even if we were to iterate over that first word once again, because when we take the intersection of the first word with itself, it's not going to change this hash map at all. That's why it works, and I prefer this because it's more concise, but it really doesn't matter. You can do it the other way if you want to save one iteration. Now I'm going to take the current word. I'm going to call this current count. I'm just going to call counter on that word as well. So now we have another hash map with a count of every character in that word. Next, I'm going to go through every character. I could actually pick either one. I could pick uh, this one or this one. I'm going to choose uh, this one just because this one is never going out of memory. Like this one is declared out there and this one we're going to keep reassigning anyway. So I'm going to say for character in count and I'm going to say let's get the count of this character in this word and let's get the count of this character in the other word. And I'm going to take those counts and try to minimize them. And then I'm going to reassign that back to this one. It's possible that maybe this character actually doesn't even exist in the other hash map. In that case, counter is kind of like a default dict. This will evaluate to zero. So in that case, this would end up being set to zero, basically telling us that we don't want any occurrences of this character in the output. So this is pretty much just to get the count of every character that we want in the output. That's what this portion of the code is doing. Now is the time to actually build the result, build that array that we're going to end up returning. So I'm going to go through every key now that's in this hash map. And I want specifically the count of this character. So I want to loop that many times. It could be zero. So we might end up looping zero times. So I'm going to say for I in 
range, whatever this count is, it could be zero or it could be a positive number. If it's a positive number, we want to add obviously this character this uh, many times. We will just do a very simple operation, append to the list that particular character however many times we want to. It could be zero or it could be more than that. And then return the result. It doesn't matter what order we add the characters in, so that's the good part. If it did, then maybe we could sort it or something. But now let's run it. And as you can see on the left, this works. Obviously, the space is efficient. The runtime is pretty random. I don't really worry about this. This is about as efficient as we can get the solution. Obviously, we have to go through all the words. If you found this helpful, check out neatcode.io for a lot more. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.